This program is brought to you by BASF, the chemical company. Hey, welcome to Stuff to Blow Your Kid's Mind. My name is Robert Lamb. My name is Julie Douglas, and today we are talking about solar power. The sun is constantly bombarding our planet with all this solar energy. It heats our world, and plants use it to feed themselves via photosynthesis. So we're going to take a closer look at this with this solar power experiment. For this, you're going to need two identical cups or glasses. Wrap one in white cardboard, the other in dark cardboard. Then put some water into each glass and set them out in the sun for a couple of hours. We just retrieve these from the sun, we put a thermometer into each one, and we can actually observe that the water inside of the dark cup is a little hotter than the water inside the white cup. What's happening here is that the cup that's wrapped in black is actually absorbing more heat, more of that sunlight, whereas the water in the cup that is uh, wrapped in white is reflecting off that sunlight. This is the same principle that we use in solar collection technologies, such as solar cells. In our experiment, we were able to witness how dark objects absorb light more readily and emit more thermal energy than lighter objects. And it all comes down to color. And the uh, same is true in any city. Just look around you. You'll find yourself com completely surrounded by generally dark buildings and very dark surfaces underfoot. Yeah, so think of all that cement and the asphalt, and then add to the equation that you have this kind of maze configuration of buildings. And that makes it really difficult for the heat to escape, which actually means that you're now going to have a two to five degree increase in temperature, which is pretty significant, especially if it's a hot summer day or if there's a heat wave. It may not sound like a lot, but everybody that gets a little warmer is going to reach out for that air conditioning uh, knob and turn it up just a little bit, and then that's going to consume more energy. So there's a very real cost involved uh, with this increase in city heat. But it seems like we might be able to solve that, maybe with just a bucket of white paint. Yeah, it really is that easy. Um, all you would have to do is paint the rooftops of a city white and you would be absorbing less light, you would be emitting less heat, and that would probably be about a one degree drop in temperature, which, I mean, that could save millions of dollars. Right, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you start looking at the energy it takes to cool a city, it really has a huge impact. Here on Earth, a little white paint could potentially cool down a city, but out here in space, it might just save the planet. Uh, but before we talk about saving the planet, let's talk about the way that light behaves in the void of space. Sunlight is made up of photons. So when sunlight hits a reflective surface, it bounces those photons off and actually exerts a force not unlike the wind behind a sail. That's right, and this is called solar sail technology, and the idea is that we could use this to propel spacecraft and we could save the planet, and here's how. Imagine the Earth, and now imagine an asteroid, a deadly asteroid, on a collision course with our planet. What we want to do is nudge it slightly off course so that it doesn't hit us. And the way that we could do this, one of several ways we could do this, would be to coat it with white paint or some sort of uh, reflective substance. So then the photons would hit this substance and bounce off, pushing the asteroid just off course enough to where it would miss us. Now think back to that simple experiment that we did with that glass of water and the sunlight streaming through it. And now think about how we can actually harness that light to do amazing things here on Earth and in space. This program is brought to you by BASF, the chemical company.